welcome, Brian. I'm so excited to see you. I think we've worked together, gosh, 10 or 12 or 15 years, a long, At least, yes, long yes. time. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to do this. Yeah, and he's been been my host at Caesars Properties, and he takes care of us everywhere we go and has for a very long time. I've been very happy to have this relationship with you. So, Brian, your official title is independent host. Do you want to talk about that? And Correct. Talk about we, we are, yes, yes, we are independent agents, so we are not employed by Caesars. So we are our own company, mm -hmm. and we work exclusively with casinos. We have contracts with the casinos. We, our particular office works has worked exclusively with Caesars for the past 20 years. And uh, we are, as I told you in a, a previous phone call, we are in the past year, we started getting licensed with Penn National Gaming as well. So that's going to be a new opportunity for players. But I'm yeah, so excited. Caesars. Yes, yes. So I can use yes. you with Caesars and I can use you. Yeah, for my yes, eventually. Players. Yes, we're getting eventually. there. We're getting there. Working yes. on that. So that's yes. a, a that's a secret thing that y'all get yeah, to hear, right? Yes, everybody. Good. Yes. Well, I thank you so much for being willing to be being willing to do this, and I know our viewers are super excited. Oh, absolutely! Thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So, everybody, I just want to let you know we're going to probably do this in multiple parts, at least two part video. So we'll just have to see how long this ends up being. So just be sure to watch for that part two, and don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button. You can support our channel for free by doing that. And check out the link in the member for, uh, in this video to join our membership. You get exclusive perks for joining that. One of those is a, not a, is a Zoom when you're a Platinum member. Uh, we do a monthly Zoom with our Platinum members. And I'm excited to say that we're gonna have Brian come on at some point and join us for that exclusive Zoom so y'all can talk to him and ask him your questions and meet him. And that'll be only for our Platinum members Members, so be sure to check that out in the link below. Your role as a, a, a independent host is you can provide services to any Caesars property at this point, right? right? Any at all, yes. We're licensed and contracted, but that is going to be most most markets, with the exception of very very few. Some that we just I'm actually located in Houston, so most okay. of it is I don't have to. You don't have to be from Houston for us to work with you. We have customers all over the nation, but that kind of dictates which uh, properties we send most guests to. What's the difference in having an independent host and a host on property? First of all, if, when you work through someone like, like me, an independent host, you won't have a separate assigned host on property. We are your assigned host. Now you will have people on property that are there only to assist with our customers. That's their sole job. They're hosts on property and there there'll be contacts during your trip if you have anything that you need during your stay. So we put you in touch with those people. I think the the one of the big benefits is that you can have one host as opposed to multiple hosts at each property. We get to know you really well. We become very mm -hmm. familiar with your play at all locations. So I think that gives us a little bit of leverage as to just better know you as a player and how you play in different markets and how to best uh, help you in new markets you may be visiting. You I send Brian an email or I mm -hmm. text him or I call him and he books our, our, our trip, tells us what offers are available, keeps me apprised of any charters that may be out there that we may be interested in. But then after we play, then I just send him a message and say, okay, we're checked out. Do you mind checking my Theo score and seeing if we are available, uh, eligible to have stuff, the stuff we charge? Right, 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 right. Oh. We do all of that. We, we book and manage your reservations. We can book your offers. Uh, the most important thing in having a host is, and we operate just like a host does on property. We review your play and make sure comps are your comps are issued accordingly based on your play. We just basically manage your account. We become an advocate for you. Yeah. Yes, that, that, and I think one of the important things is, is that we're not employed by the casino, so we don't really work for the casino. We work for you, the player, and right. our job is to our relationships allow with the various casinos allow us to do that and hope and get you the maximum amount of comps that are afforded to you based on your play. So let's talk about what players card levels you can help. We can actually help any player player card level. We have now the, the player card level within the Caesars brand obviously start, starts with gold, goes to platinum, diamond, and then seven stars. And we have customers in every one of those tier levels. So we can help anyone. Okay, yeah, so not, you don't mind helping that gold player that's just getting- Not at all, not at all. No, we'll, we'll help in any way we can, yeah. 
Let's talk just a little bit about tier credits versus reward credit. Okay, this is okay. something that people are so confused about. Yes, yes, we get a lot of this and this, yeah. So for, let's start with tier credits. Tier credits are simply what determine your card level status. You start earning your tier credits at J January 1st. It starts over the very, at the first of the year and you start earning to determine what your card level is going to be by the end of the year. Whatever status you reach by December 31st of that year makes you that you have earned that status for the entirety of the following year. So the tier credits determine your card level, your status, which card you have. Rewards credits are essentially your comps. They're what you can use to comp additional items when you go to, on your trips, such as food and beverage that you charge for your room, spa services, shows, you can redeem them at restaurants. Those are going to be comps that are available to use however you wish. So it's good to build your tier credit to get to the card level you want to be at. Correct. That is, that, is, that is what that is, yes. But it's still good to take advantage of those reward credit offers because you get separate reward credit offers. You do. Um, They're two different things, yes. And you, so I just saw today that I got an email reminding me to that I could go to all these restaurants, yes. and my card, and then you I can. earn re reward credits for that. Correct. Correct. Right? Which Correct. is going to earn me more comps at the casino. Yes. Yeah. yeah you're talking about something. You're talking about earning rewards credits. Yes. If you're, is that? Yeah. Yes. 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 You. There are many ways to earn tier credits and rewards credits, namely by play, of course. And then by purchases that you make at Caesar's properties, whether it be if you're paying for a hotel room, if you're if you're paying, maybe you do a spa service, maybe you do golf. All of those help you accrue both primarily rewards credits when you're spending, but you do earn some tier credits on those as well. Even if I'm not going to be eligible to get all my charges comped, I'm right. still going to get a benefit by charging those to my room or presenting my card because I'm going to earn credits tier and reward credits for that that's correct yeah there are many ways to earn to earn them namely play that's where you're going to earn the majority of your tier and rewards credits let's talk about making that tier credit okay the the best way so i understand the way i understand it is mm -hmm. that it's great to use those 10 time multipliers and things or mm -hmm. five times or take advantage of those multipliers that, right. that come our way sometimes because that may help us get to a higher card level faster it absolutely does. Yes, it's easier than ever to to gain higher statuses because of the tier bonuses that they do as a player. And a lot of casinos do this, but Caesars, they have multiple, well, the multipliers, yes. Mm -hmm. They do those at various properties throughout the year. It may be a five times, it may be a two times, it may be a 10 times, it may be a progressive. Those are going to be, those are just special promotions that the properties will do. But aside from that, you're only, you're earning daily bonuses as you're playing. Within yes. a gaming day, if you earn a certain number of tier credits, you get additional tier credits. And that's a quicker way to get to earn the next status or, or earn additional tier credits towards the status that you're working for. Here's the deal, everybody. It's really important to pay attention because you start getting that daily multiplier at 500 points at 500 you do. Credits. Yes. Yeah, at 500, you get an additional 125. Right, and then at 1,000, yes. you, you get an, an additional, additional thousand. thousand. Yes. Yes. These are tier credits. We're specifically talking about tier credits. Yes. And they're daily. They're, they're daily. daily. Yes, they're they are credit. daily. Yes. So we pay it, really pay attention to that and try to hit that thousand. Then we get the bonus thousand. And a few yeah. days after, you'll get an email and it'll say, congratulations, Shannon, <laughs> you won a blah, blah, blah. That, you know, whatever. Right. Just to clarify, uh -huh. making a tier and keeping it, you have all year to make whatever level. And then once you earn it and it resets December 31st, you have a whole, you stay that status for a whole nother year. Correct. And you then what you do is you start earning again to see if you, to see what your car level is going to be for the following year. So you right. maintain, so say in two, 2024, say a new player reaches diamond status by the end of the year, that will make them diamond for the, for the remainder of 2024 and also the entirety of 2025. Okay. And at January 1st, 2025, they will start earning again. It resets to zero and you start earning all over again Perfect. to determine what your, what your card level is going to be for 2026. Tier scores help the players gauge, but what do they really mean? Because I think it's a, we can't understand Theo. It's hard. We don't have it access is hard. to that. It's hard because it's, it's not made available to you as a player. You don't get to see that number, but it's, it's understanding what the casino really looks like, looks at when they're determining what a player qualifies for. 
Tier credits, tier score is completely different from Theo. And it's not, I thought about this because I was wondering, you know, how to answer people I often ask, well, how can I gauge if I've earned so many tier credits? Does that have any influence on my play or, or Theo? And yes and no, because the quality of those points is going to be different depending on what you're playing on. Say a thousand tier credits one day playing video poker machine on, on penny slots versus you spent most of that time playing a dollar machine, the quality of those points is very different. So the play level is going to be different. Their Theo is going to be different. It's hard to gauge tier credits as a kind of point to, to measure what your Theo might be. Something I teach people is to really just look at your tier credits that you earn in a day. Right. Not your bonuses, not right. your multipliers. Just your base points. Yeah, just your base right. points. I feel like every time I hit at least a thousand tier credits in a day mm -hmm. um, and then I talk to you, my play is okay. If I hit up to that two or three thousand, then I'm I'm good. Yeah. Then I'm really That's good. the best gauge though too, is that you can you know what you hit in a day and then you can contact me and we can go over what your play looks like, how it was rated, and then you can get a better idea of how you're measuring that. That's really the best way to do it. Because yes. if you if you play considerably different on different machines or a different game that may be lower denominations for a longer period of time, you may still hit that thousand, but your play may look a little different in the system on how it was rated simply because you had a different average bet. If we're trying to be a good player and, and have a good average, what are y'all looking at? What goes into that Theo and what do we need to be kind of focused so on? Theo is short for theoretical and it is what essentially determines everything that the casino used to measure a, a, a player and what a player is worth. It is your, it takes into account your average bet, the time played, and it also takes into account the house advantage on the particular game being played. And that's the variable that we don't ever know. Okay. So I can't plug in numbers. I can't say if you're playing, if you're predominant, if your average bet is this and you play this amount of time, then this is what your Theo score should be. It doesn't quite work that way. But that's-, so that's I could play 10 at five hours on a mm -hmm. video poker machine, which we all know has a higher yeah. return to player average. Right. Versus a penny slot that has a much lower return to player. Right. In that case, you would have to put in a same amount of money, a lot the same more, amount same, of time. It's going to be. I'm not going to. It's going to produce a lower. It's going to produce a lower worth. Right. But simply because of the game you're playing, you would have to put in a lot more time on those penny slot machines in order to earn what you might on other games or other slots. If you're playing a lower denomination, it's going to take more time to reach the same theoretical that you would earn by playing a higher denomination if you're playing for the same amount of essentially the amount of time. Video poker versus a penny slot machine. It varies. I mean, video poker doesn't yield a great deal in, in Theo. It takes quite a bit of time. Let's get back to the Theo. It's called average daily theoretical. Well, well, it's, 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 you, you have, so theoretical is basically your, your, I tell people to think of it as this. When you're being rated, the casino just wants a chance at your money. So they are rating you on how you bet your action. You hear that a lot. Not necessarily whether you win or you lose. It lose. And that's what the theoretical is. It's your average bet, your time played, and it takes into the house, into account the house advantage on the game you're playing. So it varies drastically depending on what you're playing. But you as a player, you have a trip theoretical, whether you come in for one day or four or five days, and then it's broken down, that average is broken down among the days that you were there, which creates your daily theoretical in a particular market. And that's the number that the casino generally looks at to determine what you qualify for on any, any given day, whether it's a comp room or trips or offers or events. It's that that they're looking at. Because it basically tells them what, what a player is worth to them on a day. Now, it may not be what you actually win. It's not actual because sometimes you win. Sometimes you may lose a lot more than what it says, but it theoretically, based on how you're playing, the time you're putting in and the average bet you've got, that's what the casino expects to make off of the player. It's also taking into account not only the money you put into the machine, but the wins you have. Absolutely. It's every, yes, yes. It's your action. It's every single bet you make. Think of it as, yes, as rating your bet. If I 
play, you know, two thousand dollars, but play five thousand dollars. Was it? What does that account towards? And you have to think of how many bets you're, you're making in that. It's not just the overall dollar amount. It's every time you get a bonus on the machine, you're making additional bets. Sometimes you increase your bets, you know. So it takes that average. But you're really better to play longer to make you're your always bets really right. last. Yes. Is there yes. a is there a magic? The example, there's no. Out? I wish there were a magic number, but it's uh, the the example I often use is if you take two players, they walk into a casino and they end up losing the exact same amount of money, regardless of what it is. One player goes in and does it within 30 minutes or an hour, and the other player maybe played five or six hours that day, but they ended up losing the exact same amount of money. That player that played five and six hours is going to have a lot more in comp worth. And it's going to be worth more to the casino because theoretically you could have lost a lot more in that amount of time based on how you were betting. Your Theo is going to be far greater than the person that walked in and played for a short amount of time. And that's okay. what the casino is looking for. Even though you ended up spending the exact same amount of money. Well, let's talk about different play. I get this okay, also, okay. whether you're playing table games or okay. poker or uh, right. volatility, right. penny slots, or $10, <laughs> $25, $100 or $100 slot machines. The machines are going to be the most accurate form of measurement. And we'll talk about table games in just a second. But those are going to be the higher the denomination and the longer you stay there, the higher theoretically you're going to have. It takes more hours if you're playing a lower denomination machine or but something, something that doesn't yield as much. Five hours. If your bankroll is going to last you five hours doing right. two dollars a bet. Instead right. of you taking that same bankroll and losing it within an hour, you're better off to do it on the lower. Technically, yes. You play yes. five hours you're on a thousand dollars. You're higher theoretical. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. One's not necessarily better, but yes, you're probably going to have a high. Yeah, the way this case signal rates you, you're going to have a higher theoretical if you do that because you put in more time, even though you're at a slightly lower average bet. Does it hurt you to go? play a little bit in the high limit and then go down to a $2 bet. So if you're playing 10 or 25 mm -hmm. or $50 bet in the high limit, and then you take part of your bankroll and go out into the... No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, we have a lot of players that do that. And it's, it doesn't necessarily hurt you, but it is taken into account because you're, you're betting one way over here and then you're betting another way over here. It's gonna, you know, you won't be rated as high had you spent all of that time in the high limit because it's the same amount of time at a higher, de at a higher denomination that would have yielded a higher theoretical. It's going to take the average of all of it. Okay, perfect. Then let's talk about table games and video poker. So table games, obviously, now that's a little bit different. A pit boss, anytime you're at a, at a player's game, you're not, a machine is not rating you. You have to rely on the pit boss. Yes, be friends with them and make sure. I tell my table players this too, because you, that's, it's a, it's a player's responsibility to make sure you're being rated properly. We can't ever go back and change a rating if there's a discrepancy after the fact. It has to be done while you're playing in the casino. They will usually look at, make sure you hand them your card, make sure you're being rated, number one rule. They'll usually look at what you what you cash in and look at your first several bets. And if you've been sitting there a while, they'll come back around and see if you've changed how you're betting. But I recommend to my players, if, if you question how you're being rated, ask, if you've been sitting there for a few hours, ask the pit boss, just to make sure you're on the same page, how they're rating yeah. you. Yeah. I, I always tell them, look, I'm playing for comps, obviously, because yes. I'm yeah. winning a lot. So yeah. <laughs> help me out. Help me understand how I'm being rated. <laughs> That's right. And enjoy it. I mean, it's entertainment. It yeah. should be entertainment value. And yeah, and it ranges so much. I mean, the level of players is vast and, and what you get in the way of comps is vast. There's a lot out there. But it's learning how to maximize your comps based on your own level of play. Right. And what you enjoy. And, keeping and what you enjoy. Yeah. I don't want to ever see anybody get hurt. And don't. I tell people don't. I mean, yeah, play for comps, but don't, don't chase comps. You can get in a right. lot of trouble that way. So... Play within your means, play at your comfortability level, but learn how to maximize your comps. And that's what a host can help you do. That's what we help you do. We just make yeah. sure you're comped accordingly and kind of give you a few tips to, to raise your, you know, we can't tell you how to bet and we can't tell you certain numbers to plug in to reach a certain theoretical, but we can help right. you gauge what you're doing. And how about that video poker? So video poker is, I mean, it's the same. I mean, you're rated whatever the dom denomination is. Uh, usually video poker, it's a lower volatility game, so you do have to put in quite a few hours. I have some players, I actually have some seven stars players who are nothing but video poker players. That's what they love to do. So they spend their whole entire time on those machines and they were able to get to that level. And it's, yeah, but the, your comps are gonna, you're gonna be rated the same way. It's, you're at your denomination times the time played. But it okay. takes more hours to 
to, to get a theoretical because it's going to the, work, have some value in comps. And that's because of the, the third factor, which is the volatility of the machine, right? Yes, yes, that's yes. The it has a lower house edge too, so that's 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 taken into account. Table games, are there mm -hmm. any that have a higher house edge so you can They range. Them? I mean, if you're if you're playing blackjack, craps, roulette, pie gal, those are gonna be your, your most evenly rated. There's always some some lever some differences between them, but for the most part, you know, depending on what kind of a player you are when you sit down at the table. And I don't want to jump ahead if you don't want to, but sports games and I have a lot of people who are poker players. Yeah, and who do, do sports betting. Those games are not rated by the casino, so those do not count towards your play or tracked play. Now, you do earn tier credits and rewards credits while playing those, but as far as being rated, and because you're not playing against the house, think of, you know, poker, you're playing against the other players at the table, and in sports betting, you're obviously, you know, making outside bets, so you're not, it's got to be casino games. So those, those two are not rated, because I've had players go and tell me, well, we did a lot of sports betting this time, well, I can't comp you anything because you it's, it's not, not go in your theo. Correct. Can locals get comps? Yes. So so oh. I had that a subscriber ask that question because they don't mm -hmm. often stay at the hotel. Right, right. But can they get comps? So let's Absolutely. Talk about yeah, that. your play still measured the same way. Now your your play may be a little bit different because obviously you're not going and staying and playing for three to four days at one time. So you're probably gonna be rated on more of a daily basis. It's considered a walk-in walk play if you just go in and play for a day or so without staying consecutively. So it may be rated a little bit differently, but yeah, you're still earning comps. You're still earning... Does that hurt you credits. if you just play for a day? It doesn't hurt you, but it's taken into to account. Now, if you just go and play for an hour or so, you might not earn as much in theoretical. I mean, if you go I and mean, play how you normally would in a gaming day as if you were traveling. You're just not spending the night. Right. Well, and we have a lot of players that do that. Players that don't take advantage of their hotel mm -hmm. offers, are there any other perks additional for them? Or should I mean, they most of, most of their offers are going to be free play or other events that they're doing. They may get invited to slot tournaments, blackjack tournaments, gift giveaways, parties, you know, Super Bowl or, or parties or viewing parties or whatever, whatever the casino is doing. They may, if their play warranted and they meet the criteria, they will get those offers as well. Okay. But they should be earning free play offers too, based on their mm -hmm. play, I would think. If a player uses a hotel offer, does okay. that go against their comps or does that matter? Let, okay, that, that's a good question. Let me tell you the distinction. A uh, comp room that you're getting never comes out of rewards credits. I get that question a lot. It does not. But it is taken into account when we're looking at your comps at the end of the stay. So for instance, if you if you if a player calls me and wants to go to Vegas and they have a comp room, that will not come out of the rewards credits, but at the end of the trip, there will be a comp value associated with that room. It's not necessarily the dollar amount or the room, but there's the casino comes up with a value of it. We compare that because that's what you're already being comped coming into the trip. And we'll look at your other charges that you've had during your trip and compare that to your play. And depending on if there's room or not, we'll comp additionally on top of that. So it is, it is considered in your comps, but it does not come from rewards credits, to be clear. Additional things do. One thing to know about Caesars properties is if you charge food and beverage to your room, if you book a show and charge it to your room, they do comp using rewards credits first. That's that's what they're for. That's what they're designed for. But they will comp above and beyond that if the play warrants it. But you've got to have a room. You do have to have a room. Places like Vegas, for instance, do a lot of food and beverage comps that can just be redeemed directly at a restaurant. So if someone doesn't have a room, they can still take advantage of that offer that they have and just redeem it at the restaurant. So it's a little different. Most of our players always stay when they go. Unless right. they're, like I said, unless they're driving over to a drive-in market nearby and just playing for a few hours and coming back home. I just, yeah. I, I, we do stay, so, but my yeah. parents have that question a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, how do I get my food and beverage credit if I'm not spending the night. Do I just lose that? Or is it better to get a hotel and not stay in it and charge back to the room so that you can do that? Well if you have if you have food and beverage comps, which would be in your offers already, and that would that would show when you're when you put your card into the kiosk, you can do you can redeem that at any participating restaurant. So you can do that without having to have a room booked. Be sure that you always walk into a casino and swipe your card. Do because you'll see you'll activate any promotions that are going on, and you'll also it'll it'll show you what offers are available to you during that time frame. 
that you so can So when use. we were in Biloxi, we weren't mm-hmm. staying at Harris. We were staying at another property, but we went over to Harris to play. And when I swiped and I looked in my app first and I didn't have any any free play offers or anything. Mm. But when I went to the kiosk and I swiped, I had three hundred and fifteen dollars in free play. Oh wow. But yeah. That I yeah. would have missed had I not swiped. Had you not done it. Yeah, always do that because and if, if you're coded to us and we're your host, we can usually see your offers, but not every offer is gonna be posted. Always important to do that just to make sure you don't miss anything that might be available to you. But again, I wasn't staying there, so I didn't even well, you wouldn't have thought to do it, right? But if yeah, you walk into a casino and you're a member, yeah. yeah, swipe your card. You never know what might be available to you. Yeah. Right, right. Maybe some surprises. Then always check the daily what's happening. Yeah, check some- check the promotions because those are usually available to everybody. You don't have to qualify for those or be right. pre-registered. They're open to anybody that walks in the door, but you do have to usually activate your card in order to be tracked. One other thing I'll mention about uh, how a casino comps if you're wondering, well, if I did play and I had my room comped, how do I know if I'm gonna get anything else comped? Generally speaking, these are just general guidelines. These are, there are in no way hard figures, but we will usually comp up to 10% of your loss or around 20% of your theoretical, whichever is greater. And the majority of the time we are always comping off of your theoretical. Some properties have a little bit different, every property operates a little bit different. Different. It, it is discretionary, it's up to the casino how they want to comp. Some may go up to around 30, that's the most I've ever seen, but usually it's around a 20%. So what they do, for instance, if you go, you had your room comped, you charge some meals and things to the room, what they'll do is take the value, whatever, that, whatever the comp value is going into the trip, which is gonna be your room, they'll look at your play and if that is already around the 20% mark of what you ever you did in the way of theoretical, that, that we would basically essentially say, there's no room for additional comps this trip. Or if there's not, if there's a if there's a gap, say the room really is only about 10% and you had enough play to do another 10, that's where you're getting that other 10% comp from. Okay, that's when it comes into playing longer. That's when it comes, yeah, that's when it comes, and those are the great now, that's after rewards credits are exhausted. They always use rewards credits first. So since you're talking about rewards credits, because you Mm -hmm. can also use your reward credits in gift shops and things. Absolutely. Yes. And that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't, that isn't attached to your trip as a comp. That's important to understand too. Yes, you can, you can, and that's what they're for. You can use them at your discretion, however you want, whether you're using them in a gift shop or at a restaurant or to wait at the end of your trip to see if you want any room charges that you want to have comp. But if I say I have a $50 in reward credit yeah. mm-hmm. and I take it to the gift shop or a restaurant and I use that, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get it again at the end of the stay. You won't get it at the end of the stay, but if you have other charges and there's play that would warrant additional comps, then we can comp additionally. What about people that come from other countries? I had that question from a viewer. Like, I just really, I can only come one time a year, so it doesn't really do me any good. But it does, because even if you can't hit that higher tier credit, you can still get offers, right? I tell people to try not, that's one thing, one distinction I do want to make too. It's the tier level, the, your tier score has no bearing on what you qualify for. A lot of people think it does, it doesn't. It's They're not basing it on your tier score. It is solely based on your tracked play or your theoretical. And that's why I stress it so much because that's what yes. the casino uses to measure everything. So yeah, we have players that don't necessarily come often enough to reach certain tier levels, but when they do come, they may play really, really well and they may get everything comped or you know whatever, whatever their play warrants. But don't get too caught up in it because that's not what we're looking at when it comes to comps. So a player that comes from Europe and they come play in Vegas once a year, if they've already, if they've not played, it's going to be hard to get a free room. You've got to start somewhere. You've got to you have, have to start somewhere. Room. Yeah. Yeah. You have to start somewhere. Yes. Yeah. But once well, you, you can usually on, put you in at the casino raid and then, and then allow you to, what we say, like play to qualify. So they can still book with you. And if they have yeah. good play, then they can still get that room comped. Absolutely. So then when they come back the next time, Maybe they have comps available to them up front, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a difference in having comps available to you up front um, versus earning them when you're there or is it the same? Well, when I say comps available to you up front, that that means that's again, based on your theoretical and the in your play history. Because what we're looking at, the casino says, okay, this is how they play the the past few times they've been here. Based on that, we're going to go ahead and comp their room. They may have an offer that we want to redeem. 
That's comped up front. That's what I mean by comps up front. They're looking at your okay. play history. It has nothing to do with your rewards credits or your tier credits. We're simply looking at how you played and kind of expect the expectation is that you're just going to play similarly to what how you've played in the past. So they're okay. saying, well, yeah, we're going to go ahead and give you these things. This is what you qualify for. Now it's always date specific. You know, the demand is what drives the criteria. I have some players who can get a room generally anytime they want to go, but if they want to go during New Year, sometimes we have a hard time getting them in just because it's such a high demand time and that's that's true of anywhere and anything i want to remind everybody don't forget to if you love our content to like and subscribe you can support our channel for free by doing that but the, we also have a paid membership that you can join where we do a zoom every month for our platinum members and we would love for you to check out our memberships and join us and check out those perks there's a link down below so please check that out and like and subscribe the caesar's tier match and if so how does that work <laughs> yes Caesars does tier match. They tier, tier match at the diamond level. The caveat is that you have to be a brand new member. Uh, you have not, you cannot have an existing card in the account. Cause I've had people come to me before that maybe haven't played in 15 or 20 years and have been playing Thank other you. casinos and they want to tier match. I'm saying, I'm so sorry, we can't do that. You have, a, you have an account in the system. So you do have to be a brand new player. And you just, you just take your, your other card to the Caesars reward center, the casino, and they can, they match it for you. Do you have to match? You have that all year? Or yes, that yes, yes. Once you, okay. once you, it's it's diamond. So once you do that, it keeps you diamond for the remainder of the year. So you and have at that earn. point, you have, yeah, you have to re-earn it at that point. You might want to be careful doing status matching like in November or December, unless you're going to have an opportunity to go back and play. Really better to do it at the beginning of the year. Yes, it gives you more time to earn for the yeah. next year. Absolutely. Okay. I'll be honest, of all, all the years I've been doing this, I've never had a tier match simply because all every time someone's already had a player's card in the system, it's a, nine times out of 10, they're going to have. But if you're a brand new player, you've never been, and you do you do have a, a certain level card at other casinos, they will match it. They don't lose that information. They keep it forever. No, no, it's there. Some people have multiple cards from years ago. Somebody said to me that they heard that the 10 times multipliers are going to be no more. I have not heard that. No, and in fact, they're doing more more multipliers than I've ever seen since since COVID. That uh, lots of properties are getting on board with this. Now that can always change, but no, I've seen. I have not heard that. In fact, we just okay. recently had some ten times, and I expect more throughout the year. Okay, because typically Caesars does at least four big ones a year. They do, they do, and they'll vary per market. They usually do them per region. Like if if the southern region's doing it, that would include like New Orleans and Bossier City and Lake Charles and. Uh, Biloxi and, and Tunica, those properties. And then like the Nevada market might do it, which would be Lake Tahoe, Reno, Laughlin, Vegas. That, that, that's typically how they do those big ones. They're brand wide. Sometimes they're, sometimes they include every property. It's a little bit different. It just depends on, on the specific promotion. We love those 10 times and we love yes, those. Everybody multipliers. does. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody's got to watch out for those. They yes. really make me want to go to the casino because I thought they I'm do. They drive a, and that's what they've been so successful. They drive a lot of business. People jump on those reservations because that's another example of, of properties that sell out very quickly. And what that does is the more people that come, it raises the criteria. So it gets harder to get a room if you wait. To book those oh, types. that made me play so hard whenever we were invited. <laughs> I was like, I gotta get those four thousand. Keep you going. <laughs> so, can, applying for a Caesar's credit card, mm -hmm. how does that help you? Now, that's a third-party vendor, so they have their own stipulations. But I think you you do get a bonus, a sign rewards credits a bonus and tier credits bonus, and then you you can earn as you spend. One thing about rewards credits that I will say, they do expire if, if there's six months of inactivity. That means going to a casino, putting your card into a machine. Uh, but the Visa card, if you have it and you're regularly making purchases of it, that keeps your rewards credits from expiring and you're earning them while you're while you're spending at Caesars outlets or and there are very different way, various different ways to do that. Is, we have a lot of players that use it. It does keep your keep your rewards credits. You you do earn. So yes. So is it just rewards credit or is it also tier credits, I think? It is tier credits, but it's uh, they're earned a little bit. You earn more rewards credits with the card, from what I understand. I think the tier credits are specific to purchase to Caesar's purchases, and okay. then if you spend a certain amount of money within a year's time, I think it's five thousand total. Then you get a five thousand tier credit bonus at the end of the year. I know you earn some free play with that as well. You can, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, we'll put that link below. Yeah, that that's where those oh, specific benefits. Yeah, you'll be able to see the terms and benefits of that specifically. 
perfect. So I know y'all don't deal with that, but we I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's a great really way to, uh, yeah, it's a great way to continue earning and build a little bit more, build a, mm -hmm. another, another little tip. All right, so now let's dig into the sports betting. How, if you get points and how does it work? And you can only earn uh, rewards credits and tier credits. Some of the sports books actually surprisingly are not owned by the casino. It's 10 tier credits for every $100 on straight bets and 20 tier credits for every $100 spent on parlays. So you're earning tier credits and you can also earn rewards credits. But again, your play is not rated. So we can't use that towards comps. Still connect it to your season. Connected to only yeah. to your tier and rewards credits, yes. Okay. You can earn those. It's, it doesn't have any bearing on your actual play. It's not rated. I don't think I had this uh, in our notes, but I think you'll be able to answer it. I'm, I'm seeing so much of these online games. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? A I little bit. You, you Again, you can earn tier credits and rewards credits. If you'll mention this in, in this uh, website, it's caesarsrewards.com. It, it's pretty basic, but it's if you go to, there's it's laid out into four segments. There, there's benefits, there's earn and redeem, and there's uh, promotions and partners. It'll detail every bit of that. If you look, it'll tell you exactly how you can earn on sports betting, on racing, on the online games. It'll tell okay. you like I point, how like many dollars in points. Right. Or right. something, and people are earning buffets, or they're earning free play, or they're earning. I don't. I don't do that, so I don't really know. Yeah, we. I don't have a lot of players to do that. I don't. I again, I work primarily on the casino side of it. So when it comes to the online, I think you just earn tier credits and rewards credits. I don't. It doesn't count towards play, so I don't think it has any bearing on offers. Okay, I try to. to my knowledge, it does I'm not. I'm such a competitive person. I didn't put it, play any money, but I'm playing all that free yeah. money, <laughs> playing and playing and playing and playing for hours, and I'm like, I think I gotta. A free ten dollars something. I'm like, oh my gosh. You might, you, yeah. There may be something. Worth, yeah, those those are going to be different. Those are going to be specific to online promotions. But again, that that information you'll be able to look up and see, and it'll tell you exactly how you can earn or, and what you can earn. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, can you think of any other ways to earn tier credits, reward credits, and comps? Generally, let's see. I mean, you're the play play in the casino is going to be your number one way to do it, and then it's going to be through through purchases. If you're if you're spending at the casino, uh, you're if you're if you're buying if you're paying for a hotel room, if you're paying for show tickets, if you're doing anything that Caesar's owned, okay. uh, you can earn tier credits and rewards credits that way. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we already talked about if you were staying at the property and you go play, how's that rated? Um, if you schedule other activities during mm -hmm. your trip. Is it not? Is it okay to not play for a day? So if I go on a four-day trip to Vegas, yeah, and I want to take a day and I'm going to go see the Grand Canyon, and I'm just mm -hmm. just better not to just play that day. So I'm only going to have two or three days of play, depending on how long my stay is. Is that going to hurt me? It's 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 not going to hurt you, but it's it's going to take the average of the entire time that you're there. So you may play. You say you you may put more hours in another day where you wouldn't have that day no we tell people go and enjoy what you're doing i mean that's part of your vacation and part of what you're doing but it, it takes the average of how you play for the entirety of the trip d yeah d d regardless of how you disperse it or how you how you spend your time playing well, if you stay four days that's going to go into your whole theoretical yes, it's going to account for the four days so however you play if you don't play one day but you play several more hours than you maybe would have on Day, another day day two and day three it's still going to account that over the course of the entire trip that's right. how they're going to come up with your average if you uh, do it enough yeah if you, if you do it enough and you just don't put in enough play to maintain what they've comped you some players get what we say over comped and that they that may they may suspend you may see a reduction in your offers you may see you may not qualify for as much until that levels out and uh, you begin okay. meeting the criteria again no, we tell you don't enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I always talk to you. Go and have a good time. Yes, <laughs> that's right. have fun. Have fun. Enjoy your trip. That that's yes. for sure. Yeah.